We at KNWA are proud to partner with the Walton Art Center to bring you this program commercial free. Please enjoy the Walton Art Center celebrating 25 years. So the Walton Art Center started as a dream, a dream of many people from our community who envisioned a place where arts and culture would have a full-time home. And Miss Helen Walton gave the initial gift to the university, and along with a lot of other donations, the Walton Art Center was born in 1992. I had known Helen Walton in other areas, but her love in life was the symphony and, amuse and music and, and a place to have that. When I came here, it was city and university owned. The board was made up of only city and university people. And we decided early on that we had to fix that, that it had to be regional because, I mean, Mrs. Walton, Mr. Walton was still in the picture then. And they both said, we're not gonna do one of these in every city in Northwest Arkansas. This better be regional. So they were proponents of the whole concept of not Fayetteville, not university, but all of Northwest Arkansas. And in order to help us with that, she did a series of dinner parties in her home, inviting their friends in the Bentonville and in Benton County area to get on board this project and to support it. Uh, Mr. Walton called me and said, Dickie Ray said, uh, Miss Helen's going to start raising, help raise money for this new art center in Fayetteville and it's going to be regional. Uh, you need to help her, will you help her? And I said, yes sir, I'll be glad to help her. It was a much different time in Northwest Arkansas and Fayetteville in, in the late 80s and early 90s. Even if we weren't quite sure what an art center could mean, there was universal acclaim, we should have something. Now, opinions would vary on what that meant, what it should be, who should be able to book the venue and things like that, where it should be. But even then we knew we were growing and we didn't have a venue. I mean, you had Barnhill Arena for big concerts, but you didn't have anything, anything like the Walton Arts Center in all of Northwest Arkansas. We started planning this really actively in 1987. The city had a tax that had been imposed called a hotel and motel tax, and it had accrued to more money than they really imagined that it would, around four million somewhere. So the city formed an ad hoc committee made up of people interested in the arts. If there were going to be a performing arts center, we felt like it needed to be close to the university, close to downtown. I think the basic reason was is with the tie with the city and the tie with the University of Arkansas, they were wanting to clean up Dixon Street from the university to downtown. At that stage, everybody wanted to be out on North College and nobody wanted to be on Dixon Street. Dixon Street was a very rough place. First year that I opened in 1980, there was three murders on Dixon Street. One of them right outside of my back door and so uh, it was a rough place. That was the biggest question that we got when I got here was, why are you building it on Dixon Street? I don't go there after dark. I don't think even the most generous person would say it was thriving economically. I know there are nostalgic types who miss those days, but if we're to be honest, it was not a thriving economic district in the least. The block that the Walton Art Center sits on had 17 property owners, so we bought parcels, 17 parcels to put that block back together. So four had occupancy, the rest were all empty. That tells you what Dixon Street was like at that point. The saving grace for Dixon Street in downtown Fayetteville is, was the creation of the Walton Art Center on Dixon Street. And it kind of created a link between the University of Dixon Street and the square that uh, worked well for, for everybody. People were really nervous about it, but, but there was a good cadre of people who came regularly and came often, and they supported the businesses that were still on Dixon. There were a handful that stayed through all the downturn and were still here when it came back up. We finally opened in 1992. It was just spectacular. Well, there were there were two parts to the grand opening. One was a, much like what they're doing for the reopening, well, an all day, multiple stages going, lots of performers and local groups were going all day long. We'd also built a stage out on what was then Tyson Plaza. You wanted to be there because it was momentous. Here was a $25 million investment, co-funded by the town, the university. It was just something that all came together. We wanted to make it joyful and fun and very representative of the communities that were involved. And each uh, community came with their representatives to form a, a group out front to represent everybody in the area. 
and to make sure that they felt it was theirs and owner, owners of it as well. We had a, a ribbon cutting and Mrs. Walton came and she was so excited on that day because it was really a culmination of, and a dream come true for her. The Walton Art Center brought traffic to Dixon Street. I mean, I think it gave people confidence that they could come here and it was safe to come down to Dixon Street. And I think that from that, all these businesses that are here now began to look at it as a possibility for their location. Uh, you know, the dream was big, <laughs> maybe too big, but, but we had to think that way in order to pare it down to be what we could afford. Money always is the driving force, I think. It was pretty early that, that the administration management of the early Walton Art Center's days realized we're growing as a region and we're gonna need more room. In the process of building, we ran, were running out of money and we had to cut the size of the building down some and the classrooms were eliminated. So when Bob McBride started talking to us about he needed to move out of the downtown setting, we ended up acquiring that building in a sort of a trade out and they got a naming opportunity in the building and we picked it up for almost no cash on hand and then were able to renovate it to make up for all those things that we had cut out of the main building. And you've seen that continue with the AMP and other things, like the campus has expanded. The AMP got started by a gentleman named Dan White. He was uh, one of the VPs at Tyson, and uh, he missed having concerts in the summer when he grew up out in, in New York. And so he actually purchased the, the big tent and started the AMP, and they ran it for three years until I purchased it from them. We were fortunate to have it supported well when we were just a tent in the mall parking lot. And I was excited about the success that we were having, but I knew that as a private owner, we wouldn't have the ability to get as much buy-in from the corporate community and the sponsors that support it now, or like the generous donation of the land that Miss Hunt gave for us to build where we're at. And I knew that it wasn't gonna grow anymore if I didn't have a chance to pass it off to some, an entity like the Walton Art Center. George's was one of the first people they ever partnered with when we did a concert series. And then uh, they purchased the AMP from me and my then partner, Susie Stevens, uh, with the intent to build a permanent facility and go from just being a tent in a parking lot. So doing that, we were able to have the, the, the dream and vision that we would be able to build it and go as, as grand as we did. So I signed on six years ago for a, a five-year deal and now I've re-up for another three and it's kind of hard to believe that I've been with the Ant for 10 years now and the Walton Arts Center for six. My hope is that it continues to serve and program to the diversity of our community while I'm running it and hopefully long after I am and I think it's been an amazing first three years in this new building that we have and people have really enjoyed it and not just our concerts, community events that we've been able to host. My hope is that it just, you know, we're able to maintain the level of success that we have so far from a commercial standpoint because, you know, the money that we make at the Ant goes to help fund all the arts and education programs that happen at the Walton Arts Center. So education has always been a cornerstone of what Walton Arts Center does. Seeing yellow school buses outside the Walton Arts Center was always part of the original vision. And so it's something that we hold very dear to the work that we do. The Colgate Classroom Series is the way that we reach out to every child in Northwest Arkansas. The Colgate Classroom Series invites school groups to come see live performance on our stages. And we bring artists from all over the world, uh, really opening the door to Northwest Arkansas students. Walton Arts Center has participated in research with uh, University of Arkansas and uh, we're discovering a lot about what students get from uh, attending a live performance. And so some of the things that we found that kids who participate over time with Walton Arts Center, so kids that get to see live performance in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, that they're different from kids that aren't given that access. We found that these kids that have the arts in their life are more likely to read for pleasure. They're more likely to have an ongoing interest in the arts. They're more likely to be interested in the things that are going on in school, more academically interested, and then also have more empathy and compassion for other people. For many kids, if they don't come with their class, uh, they don't get to come and experience live performance. And so being able to learn outside the walls of the classroom is really important. The Arts with Education Institute is the awe institute, and it's awesome. Arts with Education Institute was actually 
the very first program of Walton Arts Center. That institute continues today. We teach teachers how to use the arts across the curriculum. So whether you're a language arts teacher, whether you teach history, whether you teach science, the arts can be important to your classroom. We work with thousands of teachers each year to bring their students to field classes in the performing arts, to train them to use arts integrated practices so that they help their children use the discipline of the visual or performing arts to help their students read better, understand more, communicate better, and show what they know. The use of arts in learning literacy, social studies, history, or science is extremely helpful to build skills in young learners and then to help that young learner work collaboratively and creatively with their team to help show and share what they know. Teachers told us that teaching Arkansas history was difficult and we knew that the arts could help. And so working with partners like Trike Theater, we put together a series of different performances where we use performing arts to help kids better understand and to better appreciate Arkansas history. The production of three great performances at all grade levels. It includes Bear State of Mind, Digging Up Arkansas, and other performances that help students be proud of their state, know more about their state, remember where we came from, think about where we're going, and take pride in the things that make Arkansas great. And that's what Arkansas History Through the Arts does. Well, the Walton Arts Center is one of, if not the largest cultural assets in the, in the, the region. So it's, it's incumbent upon us to constantly be reaching out to our other cultural partners to collaborate, to support each other, to find ways to engage audiences in a new and different way, to increase the audience, and to be as relevant as we can on a daily basis and to make sure that arts is part of the general appetite of the community. That it's not just an event you go to, but it becomes part of a way of life. We perform six concerts a year at Walton Art Center. Live classical music connects us to different cultures and different time periods. And music, once it's written, of course, stays on the page. So it needs human people to bring it to life. And it needs an audience to realize its full value, not just someone playing in an empty room. Walton Art Center is an ideal venue for us. It fits us physically, on stage, backstage, and the acoustics are very flattering for a variety of musical art, and it's a great place to be a patron as well. As a resident company, Walton Arts Center provides us with guidance and support and infrastructure that is very important to our success. It's very hard for an orchestra to run itself and manage a building, and it's very hard for a building to manage an orchestra or a theater company. Or We're where we are because of their support. Walton Arts Center rents the space to the Community Creative Center and in 2008 they started offering hands-on studio arts classes in clay, ceramics, pottery, painting, drawing, all kinds of hands-on studio arts. It's a maker space. All ages, you can be a beginner or you can be highly qualified and high, highly skilled to come and take a class here. One of our most successful collaborations is a program called Stage to Studio. Their team brings in 50,000 kids from all over Northwest Arkansas to participate in their Colgate Classroom Series. They'll reach out to the schools in the area that have high free and reduced lunch, that are high need, low income schools. The kids will come see a show, then they'll come across the street, we'll feed them lunch here, and then they'll do a hands-on studio art um, workshop that's based upon what they saw over there. There. Another partnership that we do with the Walton Arts Center, it's called the Holiday Gift Market, which will begin in November. We'll have about 25 local artists, incredibly talented people who create wonderful gifts. We will set up in the newly remodeled McBride Studio over at Walton Arts Center. It's going to be open every day that the Walton Arts Center has a holiday show. So if patrons can come in and do a little shopping before, we'll wrap it up for them and then they come after the show and they can take it home with them. Again, it's a great partnership for us for our local artists, gives them a chance to show their wares to the community, gives patrons an opportunity to shop. It's a really great partnership. It was super successful last year, and I imagine it's going to be even more successful this year. 
Well, Theater Squared was a very good idea hatched around a dinner table at the home of Bob Kohler. Basically, he sat down with Bob Ford and Amy Herzberg, uh, having invited them to dinner at their home, and said, you've talked about wanting to start a professional theater. What's it going to take to actually do that? And Amy said, we need a space. We need a space that was dedicated to uh, theater and to this theater. And within a few days, Bob Kohler had called back and said, Found you a space! Uh, where they ended up was right here at Walton Art Center's Nadine Bong Studios. And it's been amazing. It's been perfect. It has created part of our identity. This intimacy, this relationship, this kind of wide space where everyone gets to be close to the stage is because of what can fit in Nadine Bomb Studios' uh, studio theater. The Walton Art Center has left kind of a permanent imprint on Theater Squared in that way, in that, the physical space and our audience loves the intimacy. Honestly, the Walton Art Center has been our most valuable partner since day one, and even as we move towards a permanent facility across the street, they're gonna to continue to be. It was waiting to happen, and we just happened to be here to make it happen. I started Trike Theater in 2008. Trike Theater is a professional theater for young audiences, which means that we uh, do three things. That's why the Trike has three wheels. The first thing is we produce theater for youth, which is adults performing for children. So we hire professional actors, hire professional designers, directors, everybody to be able to produce quality, amazing theater that is locally produced for young audiences and families. And then we also, our second wheel is our academy program, and that's where our kids are doing theater. They're taking classes, they're in the youth productions. So it's see, do, and then also learn through. And so the learning through is our outreach, and we have a partnership with the Walton Art Center to be able to do that as well. When I was thinking about starting Trek Theater, I immediately went to Laura Goodwin and asked her what her thoughts were. And she and I instantly began to collaborate about what we could do with Walton Art Center Education Program. Even before I got my 501c3, we were already collaborating. <laughs> It's been a wonderful partnership because the Walton Art Center has been a dreamer like us. As partners, we've brought our strengths. They have been able to fundraise and market and get schools to come to see the show. And we've been able to hire the artists and the playwrights and the actors and direct and design shows that are completely innovative and immersive and new for the audience. Hi Lane, hey. welcome. Let me show you what's new. Right. This is our new production facilities and it was built with the city and the Walton Art Center and it's it's what allows us to do everything we do back a house. Our new wardrobe room and makeup gives us tremendous opportunities to handle most of the shows that are out on the road today. Of course, laundry is really critical. Between every show, they're uh, cleaning everything they wear. But this hallway is filled with cases and trunks uh, but it's space that we never had before. So for us, it's been terrific. And on our left, we have a place where our crew can now do all of their work, cut all their gels and set up all their lighting. And, and on this side, we uh, can store instruments. So we can leave them here for Sona, as well as for the use of the Walton Art Center. Down here, we've got administrative and production offices. So this is our staff and crew lounge, uh, something we've never had. Uh, we're actually about 20 feet below ground, but it allows us a place for our crew when they get here very early in the morning to set up a show. When they're not pushing boxes, they can come in and have breakfast, run out, do the rehearsal, come back in and use it pretty much 24-7. So it's a great space for us. And welcome to the Suddeth Garden Room, a new space uh, that allows us to do so many different things, mostly serve our donors. Um, but also have private events and special pre-concert opportunities or post. 
Uh, for me, the beauty is being able to look out and look at this garden, uh, which has been so underutilized and now will be a focal point of this room. So we can open the doors and look at the beautiful art and just have a great space that can be used for all kinds of things. So obviously this is gonna be one of the most beautiful parts of what you guys have here now. And a lot can be done in this area too. Yeah, we've added a lot of elements, new planting, new trees, new grass, and all the lights are gonna upleft the trees and becomes a great event space that really is now connected fully and better to the art center. Because you said you guys have utilized this in the past, it was available in the past, but now you're really opening it up and just making it grand and gorgeous for We're everyone trying. who wants to use yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. One of my favorite rooms here at the Walton Art Center is our new piano storage. And why is because we house two incredible pianos, one that we've had a long time that we've just completely restored. And this we sent to Steinway so it could be completely restored. And we use this for jazz and contemporary music. Uh, but also, the newest one in the back there, we went to the Steinway factory to pick it out. So we built a room that has humidity control, and they live in here. And they'll live in here all the time for all the artists that come. And got a great sound. That's all I know. So. <laughs> so having two pianos actually allows us to do something we've never been able to do, which is put two pianos in two of our halls, both in Star Theater, now in Baumwalker Hall, and have concerts going on at the same time. We will be functioning as a two theater complex, which is how we were built in the first place. Uh, but it's because of all the production work that you've seen that allows us to actually be able to run two theaters now at the same time. So very special for us. So welcome to the new Star Theater, our uh, one-third larger. We can go up to 265 people, uh, but what is brand new, obviously this last summer we put in the new seating, which is telescopic. Uh, so you can put three rows out or nine or go all the way like this, and it just is the most flexible uh, theater space in all of Arkansas, quite frankly, whether you want to do dances here. Um, push the seats back and do concerts in the round or um, circus acts, education program, rehearsals for the symphony, and uh, it's just a great space. The window allows us to do things um, such as have an open event, like uh, or at nighttime put sparkly lights outside and do things, or you can close it up. We have a shade that comes all the way down and blackens out, so it's uh, it's a very special space that I think will be probably the most utilized in the whole building. Welcome to the Star Theater Green Room, a beautiful new space where our artists in Star Theater can actually hang out while our artists in Baumwalker Hall have the back of house area. So this is brand new and quite frankly allows us to be that two functioning theater that we've wanted to be for quite some time. And so it's a nice space and a place that will handle lots of different kinds of artists, small groups as well as large groups. So the green room opens up into two beautiful dressing rooms. This, the Malone dressing room, is one of the largest ones. And for us, what we try to do here is to make the artists just feel at home. They're on the road so many weeks on their buses and tour trucks and we want them to come here and be comfortable. So what I'm so excited about is the way we've set up these rooms so that artists really can take their shoes off, have a nap, do their makeup, do their uh, all their internet work and feel at home. It's really an important part of what we do here at the Walton Art Center, making artists feel really part of our community. The ultimate, I think, compliment for Walton Art Center is when you talk about some of these other things that are recent additions like Crystal Bridges or the Razorback Greenway, a lot of people now don't mention Walton Art Center because it has now moved from that new place to that place that hasn't always been here. Wasn't it just here? And then you've been successful. I don't think that means people take it for granted, but it's just like, oh, this is, this is part of us now. And I think it will be for at least another 25 years, probably another 100. My hope for the future of the Walton Art Center is that they continue to bring in amazing performances that we would never have an opportunity to see that continues to inspire and feed us and challenge us in ways and bring us together as a community. Walton Art Center will continue to contribute greatly to the culture of Northwest Arkansas beginning with the kids up 
to mature folks like me who go. You know. So when I look at 25 years of arts and culture in Northwest Arkansas, it's, it's incredible to me to see the impact that the Walton Arts Center has had on so many different people. With the Walton Arts Center down here, then the attraction for other businesses like mine and, 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 and my neighbors down here goes up tremendously. You take those guys out of the picture, then we're just another street. When we see shows take place in the entertainment district, we see our restaurants full, we see our bars frequented after uh, the event, we see our parking uh, in our decks and our surface lots so full. We see an energy in the district that is more than it's like when they don't have something going on at the center. It's one of the crown jewels of the city. It, it just pulls a community together. It's one of the, the, the great tap, part of the great tapestry of the city. To be able to have access to the world's artists is such a special thing, especially when you consider a community of our size. And so um, to live and grow up in Northwest Arkansas is an incredible experience because of how much arts are available to us and how accessible they are. It's what brings fun. It's what brings cultural engagement. It's what brings, it's what brings uh, an entirely creative, innovative atmosphere to our region. Life without the arts, if you really think about it and you took that all away, what would it be? Um, it would be survival. Um, the arts help us celebrate, appreciate, understand who we are as human beings. It it's defines Northwest Arkansans, I think. It helps to define who we are along with the Razorbacks and the trails, the walkways. I mean, Walton Art Center is, is defining, it really is. The thing that strikes me most about the Walton Art Center is the broader community of arts and culture in Northwest Arkansas. And this campaign for 23 million was a big step for us, um, but it was successful because everybody participated. It was about how the community saw the value of what we do, the impact that we make every day, and they locked arms, jumped together, and I think we're, we here at the Walton Arts Center are so proud uh, of what this great facility means uh, to our community and to the residents and all the folks that use it day in and day out. So we're so thankful for everybody's support and participation. We hope you've enjoyed this commercial-free presentation of Walton Art Center celebrating 25 years. Be sure to drop by the center this Saturday for the family open house from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to get a full tour of the new facilities and see live performances by Trike Theater and other local musicians. And then from 6 to 10 in the evening for live performances from the Symphony of Northwest Arkansas, Delta Capella, and the Fayetteville Jazz Collective. Thank you again for watching, and we hope to see you this Saturday at the Walton Art Center.